What's going on everybody? I'm John and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty fun topic. So, sailors and boaters of Reddit. What's the most amazing or unexplainable thing you've seen at sea? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Enjoy. I've done some sailing on a 134-foot double-masted steel brigantine. Finally, a question I can answer. We were sailing through an area of high biological productivity in the North Atlantic one night. My shipmate was on bow watch. I was on the quarter deck assisting the mate with whatever needed to be done. I suddenly heard my shipmate yelling my name and saying I needed to come up to the bow as quickly as I could. When I got up there, I saw seven or eight bottlenose dolphins swimming through bioluminescent water right under the bow of our boat. Every inch of them glowed green. It was like something out of a dream. They looked like glow-in-the-dark torpedoes. When we looked out across the horizon, we saw green spots everywhere. There must have been close to 30 dolphins swimming around. We got almost the entire crew out of bed to come watch. That's definitely something I'll remember for the rest of my life. I worked on a cruise ship for seven months as a youth staff taking care of kids while the parents partied up. At certain parts of the day, we closed the playroom to the older kids and just let parents with their children that are under two come in. This woman comes to the gate with a double stroller with two of the ugliest looking babies I've ever seen in my life. She asks if she can come in with her babies. Of course, I oblige, but something seems a little off. She takes the babies out of the stroller and puts them on the blanket that we have toys placed upon in the middle of the room. It is then that I realize what was so strange about these babies. They were dolls. This woman was taking pictures of them with the toys and pretending they were alive, names and all. I just looked over at my coworker, and she's giving me the same look of shock and horror that I had on my face. We had no clue what to do or say. News spread quickly to other crew members on the ship about her. Apparently, she bought gold bracelets for them at the jewelry shop on board. That woman is by far the most amazing and strangest thing I've ever witnessed at sea. An acquaintance in high school had sailed around the world with his parents starting when he was in elementary school. It took them six or seven years, so he was in high school when they got back. He had lots of stories of interesting things seen. One I remember was another sailor with a pet monkey. The guy kept a couple chickens for eggs on the boat too. The monkey viewed the chickens as his pet and often held them, stroking them. One chicken stopped laying and the sailor decided to eat it. He took the chicken to his cutting board in the cockpit and cut its head off. The monkey watching this screamed in terror, then scrambled to the top of the sailboat mast. It stayed up there for three days until thirst drove it down. After that, the monkey would run to the top of the mast if the man ever got his cooking knives out. When I was 11, I went on a night fishing trip with my friend's parents. As we got about half a mile past the Skyway Bridge out of St. Pete, they noticed one of those big blue plastic 55-gallon barrels bobbing in the water by a channel marker. So we pull up to it, and the adults lugged it to the boat to open. I remember all the adults gasping and giggling when they opened it. I immediately followed by my friend's mom ushering us to the bow of the boat to sit down and only face forward no matter what. Well, of course, the little 11-year-old curious F-face eventually turned around to try and catch a glimpse of whatever cool adult shit was in that barrel. Well, I turned around to see what looked like a bunch of plastic vacuum-sealed bags of some green herb. It wasn't until years later that I realized what I'd witnessed. Now, the better question is, did they find it or did they pick it up? A lot of things. I've seen a dolphin do the most elegant backflip you've ever seen. We caught a blue albatross as it went to dive for our gear. When we pulled that bird in to release it, it was so unbelievably calm we held its wings open to take a picture. Massive birds, those ones. At the back, while working gear, all of a sudden we see this black blade-like looking thing climb its way out of the water. Once it reaches a height of roughly six feet, it comes slamming down into the water. It does this maybe five or six times. Hard to explain how bizarre it is seeing something like this until you've spent days, weeks, and months staring off at water and seeing nothing. It was the tail of a thresher shark that was climbing out of the water and trying to concuss the squid-like looking gear. But honestly, one of the most amazing things is the bait ball. It's caused by weather phenomena, actually. 
What happens is that herring and other feed fish predominantly survive in green, plankton-filled water. Their predators hate it for the most part because the plankton clogs gills and so on. But what can happen is if blue and green water mix, and due to temperature differences, and a large amount of clear blue boils up from below, it can expose massive schools of feed fish. Well, once this happens, the entire ocean kicks into gear. Tuna come over, dolphins come, sharks, seagulls, and other birds. Everybody's getting into it. Below, they create this tightening circle of doom where they travel around the ball, keeping the feed fish from escaping. Fins of all kinds breach the surface, and just when we think we've seen everything, a massive humpback whale crashes the party. It went directly through the center, destroying the ball, scattering the feed, and all the predators. Freshwater boater here. I typically hunt and fish the Arkansas River. Where I'm at, it's a huge body of water. One day while fishing in some lazy backwater off the Arkansas, we, my girlfriend and I, heard a faint, very faint, raised voice. We stopped and listened intently. The wind and noises of the water lapping against the side of the boat made it impossible to make out what they were saying, but it sounded serious. So we stowed the fishing gear and made towards the sound. When we came out of the backwater area towards the main channel, we could see a capsized boat with two people clinging to it desperately screaming for help. A pretty dangerous situation. They appeared to have no life vests on and the river was carrying them away. We made our way over and helped the couple into our boat and made for sure so I could go back and retrieve the boat. Another boater saw what was happening and made his way to the capsized boat. The couple were older and clearly exhausted from their ordeal. From taking them to they told me they had hit a sandbar going top speed. It was only a 25 HP motor and a 16 foot boat. And when the boat suddenly stopped, water swamped over the stern and turned the boat over. After dropping the couple off on the bank with my girlfriend to rest, I helped the other boat tow the boat to the bank. When we got it there, we managed to get enough of the boat on the bank so we could turn it over and begin dewatering it. Once it was seaworthy again, I towed it back to the boat ramp for them and they were able to get it back on a trailer and they left after thanking us profusely. I was fishing in a 17-foot mohawk canoe off the main bridge in Titusville, Florida. About 2,000. My kids were small. It's teeming with fish in that area, and I headed for a trough that NASA cut off to build the fuel railroad system out of to launch area. It holds black drum as well as other tasties. I have a trolling motor on the side of the canoe, and I head for the spot down in the south shore. Over to my left, just as I arrive at the south end of the trough, I see a pod of manatee in the water about 75 yards away. I have a little camera stowed away and I decide to get some up close pics for the kids. I turn west into the middle of the lagoon and head over to shallow water and grass beds with my trolling motor turned to 5, top speed. I notice it appears very shallow, immediately ahead of me and I cut the motor quickly to zero. That's the last thing I remember before the loudest noise that came from all around me. Water exploded around and under my 75 pound canoe with 150 pound me in the back. The front of my canoe went up over at 45% angle and the rear of my canoe with me in it came off the surface of the water, some amount such that my battery came off the floor. In the front of my canoe, all my tackle and such was launched into the air. I remember seeing a single large pinfish, not mine, but one belonging in the water, arcing over the whole mess as I gripped the gunnels. It's not obvious what happened to me for a minute. I was so afraid and so vulnerable and unsure if it would happen again. I reattached things back at my trolling motor, wires had come loose I think, and went to the shoreline where the railroad passed and got out and tried to piece my equipment back together and my experience. The pod of roughly 21 manatees, number from Ranger, had come into the lagoon area recently and as it turns out, they have a similar danger signal to beavers. They slap the surface of the water. When that many do it, and it's in two feet of water, and they are really frightened by my entry into the area, it can almost violate the laws of bowel physics. Trust me, I know. For me, the memory that sticks with me was when I first realized just how powerful the sea is. 
I was working on a boat in Japan on my way back into port after a four week swing. Just sat in my cabin one evening watching a film on my laptop when every now and again I noticed a bright flash from behind me. I turned around just in time to glance out of my porthole as a bolt of lightning lit up the sea and captured a snapshot of an enormous wave just about to break over the side of the boat, which started getting tossed around like a toy. The boat's a 120 meter LOA. Certainly gave me the shivers, anyway. Long, long ago was in the US Coast Guard stationed at an unnamed air station. It was a weekend and I had operations duty. Okay, this is more amusing than amazing, so don't get your hopes up too high. I received a call on the telephone landline that someone was poaching lobsters on the north side of the base. I did the normal thing, which was to press the ooga alert and loudspeak, boat crew to operations, waited and no one came in. I stood up and looked out at our pier and the 30 footer was missing. I sent someone running to the north side and yes, it was our boat crew poaching the lobsters. Well, I'm sure they were totally held accountable and you guys didn't have lobster for dinner that night. RAN 2000-ish, Indian Ocean, on watch maybe 0200, pitch black except for stars and quiet apart from the diesels. I notice a humming sound, sort of halfway between hearing it and feeling it. This goes on for a while, but all of a sudden it gets a lot more intense, and suddenly I notice a glow way under the water. I thought it was bioluminescence on a shark or whale or something, but it kept floating up and suddenly just shot off maybe half a knot mile taking the hum with it in about one or two seconds. Nothing can move that quick underwater. I reported it and it was logged, but nothing came off it. Heard stories from shipmates about the same thing happening, but the glow goes into the air. To know about that, but what I saw, I have no explanation for. Also, equator crossings. Shit gets weird. When I was younger and on a family holiday in Grand Canaria, we went on a boat trip around the island. Seemed like a good way to waste the day in the sun. We were on a medium-sized catamaran, and between the two hulls, there was a kind of netting that people were sitting on. It was a pretty chill time, and 12-year-old me loved sitting on it and looking out at the sea. Then we hear the crew yell something. They'd spotted dolphins. Cool. So we get up, can see them jumping a bit off in the distance in parallel to how we're traveling. Then we notice they're getting closer and closer. I go back to the netting, thinking I'll be able to see one as it passes beneath the boat. I look down at just the wrong moment as this complete derp of a dolphin decides that it was the perfect time to jump when he was underneath the boat and headbutts me. He lands back in the water and the school moves on, but my day is ruined by a bloody nose and a black eye from getting a Glasgow kiss by an effing flipper. Edit. And now this is my top rated comment. Who would have thought a traumatic experience that scared me off the sea for years would reap karma? This isn't too amazing, but it was really cool at the time for me. While in Cape Cod, right off the shore of Nauset Beach near East Orleans about seven years ago, I was on the family boat, a 24-foot Grady White. We were sitting there looking at the seals in the water feeding on some sort of bait fish while we saw one of them split off the pack. Now, keep in mind, that we were almost 100 yards away, so we were surprised to see that this seal was headed our way. He must have been very interested. It didn't take more than 30 seconds for this guy to come right up to the side of the boat we were on, and I kid you not, it just treaded water and looked at us for about five minutes. We were all taking pictures and talking to this kind of visitor, as most people would do, all while he calmly watched us. After we had put down our cameras and sat back down, still watching our new friend, he swam off and went back to his seal buddies to continue feeding. It was truly an amazing experience for myself. I mean, we're in their environment when we are at sea. So do you ever think that intelligent sea life, dolphins, seals, etc., they look at us as if we're their zoo? I don't know. I thought it was pretty cool. I was a Navy sailor who went out to sea many times for weeks at a time. One of my jobs was being a lookout to spot boats, planes, things in the water or air pretty much and report it back to the ship. My lookout rotation could have me standing watch during the day or night sometimes both, and it was during the nights where I was pretty afraid, especially if you were at the back of the ship alone. For anyone who hasn't been out in the middle of the ocean in the middle of the night, 
you should realize you see many more lights in the sky than you would ever in a city. And on Navy ships, they like to have very little lights on at night, so standing watch around 1 a.m. feels very alien sometimes. And during the nights without a bright moon to help with your vision, you may as well be on a different planet. There was this one time I saw a bright green color moving in the water slowly, and I didn't know what it was. My mind told me it was a USO or something else. Eventually, I was told it was just plankton, but it sure looked freaky to someone who wasn't aware of the glowing plankton produces. Another time, me and another guy were standing watch together, and I decided to just look up during 2 a.m. and see what things I would come across the midnight sky. I would see meteors streak across the sky, but a couple of times there were bright lights moving slowly way out there. Perhaps a satellite, maybe, who knows. But I stared for a good 20 minutes in the sky and encountered approximately 15 of those slow-moving lights in different areas of the sky, perhaps many millions of miles apart. Either way, those were the few times I saw for myself how vast space really is and that there was so much unknown out there that humans have yet to discover or explain.